All right, uh, politics uh, reporter Kenny Mapanga now joins me in uh, studio to talk to us about uh, the DA leader's uh, manifesto launch, of course, uh, that we saw happening. Very good afternoon uh, to you, Kenny. All right, you were at uh, that briefing, of course, uh, the, the DA leader, John Steenhazen, launching his uh, manifesto campaign. Uh, talk to us um, about that. I mean, uh, it does look as though he is being uh, endorsed, a uh, confident looking uh, Jean, uh, John Steenhazen, and would you say rightly so? Rightly so. Good afternoon, Flo, and uh, to the viewers at home. Of course, uh, he launches his campaign by starting in Gauteng, uh, a province that internally enjoys a lot of support in. Uh, we were in Bedford View where it appears that the DA in Gauteng is endorsing him for that uh, second term as they head to DA Congress in April. So there are seven selling points that he made uh, to those delegates that were at the um, establishment in Bedford View where they had this campaign launch. So his wishes and his selling points is that um, he wants to make history by getting the ANC under 50% nationally and ensuring the DA is the only alternative in the country. He wants to focus the DA's communication on uh, the matters that matter most to voters. He wants to end load shedding. He wants to embrace the private sector to reduce unemployment uh, below 20%. Um, that's quite an ambitious uh, um, selling point that he's given to the Gauteng. He also wants to defeat Cato deployment. You've seen that they already made moves, the DA, to uh, fight this uh, deployment policy that we've seen in governance. Uh, he wants to reduce violent crime and devolve more powers over electricity, generation, public transport, and policing to capable local governments. So that's essentially, in a nutshell, rather, what he's presented to the DA in Gauteng. And it appears that uh, that is a province where he enjoys much support and if we look at the 2020 congress which uh, elected him for the first time he enjoyed overall uh, 89 percent of that support and uh, he was up against against um, balinduli at that time yeah and, and, but let's talk about i want, I want to get to uh, you know his opponent but let's just talk about these seven pointers these mm. seven, seven selling points you're talking about mm. rather ambitious especially the, the the top two you know um getting i think you said getting anc uh under uh 50 percent 50 percent Yes. Yeah, uh, being the only uh, opposition um, for uh, the ANC when you have uh, the EFF. You know, what were some of the qu questions posed around those particular two uh, issues as you were sitting in that uh, particular briefing where that manifesto uh, was indeed being launched? Well, I think the selling points spe speak to the kind of period that we're in right now. As we head to 2024, it's a crucial time. Uh, South Africans are fed up with the current state or quality of life. There are a lot of challenges, social and economic challenges that we're facing. Yeah. Of course, the energy crisis. People are looking for resolutions. And just practically, the DA is the official opposition with quite a sizable uh, percentage of uh, voters in this country. So they appeal to want to uh, steal from that votership of the ANC in order to get some of these uh, visions to light. And of course, even though it's not realistic, as you say, um, <laughs> Flo, to name some of these wish lists of John Steenhazen, but it is selling points for the current circumstances that we're dealing with right now. People don't want to see load shedding happening. Yeah. Uh, people want employment. They want jobs. Uh, people want to see a better South Africa. People want an alternative where they can see a change in this country. So it's an opportune time uh, for Steenhazen, but I think within the DA and internally, um, he still enjoys uh, that support. There's nothing that indicates in this moment that from 2020, which was uh, three years ago, that his support has dwindled internally in the party. And, and, and on that note, let's talk about uh, his uh, opponent this time around. Uh, let's talk about the chances for Dr. Mpopaladze and, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm, I'm obviously looking at how Mbalinduli fared. Yes. Um, and, and back then, I think you did mention that there were, uh, you know, 2,000 delegates at the time and yeah. Mbalinduli got around uh, 300 of those. So, you know, a landslide victory then uh, yes. for John Steenhazen. I mean, is that likely to change? You know, we have a new candidate, yes, but I mean, if you look at the fact that Mbalinduli had been actually sort of been growing up in, in the party, where we didn't really see Dr. Mpopa Lazi doing uh, the same. So if it can hit, uh, you know, Mbali Nduli, what are the chances for Dr. Mpopa Lazi? 
Well, this was a question that was posed uh, to CNAs, and he actually does welcome uh, this challenge. Uh, it's, it's quite good for democracy. Um, it's a black woman uh, running for that top post between the uh, in the Democratic Alliance. It's important to see that. Um, whether that will come into fruition, um, you have to look at the uh, 2020 figures as well. Um, as I've stated before, when he was up against Balint Duli, that was a formidable force within the DA. Yeah. Um, she's held leadership positions before, and one could argue she was qualified for the top job, mm. um, but she lost and he won by 89% of the vote. And if you broke it down according to each province and how the provinces in the uh, DA voted, he still enjoyed at least over 70% in each province uh, when they voted. So one can assume that in three years, um, he may have received criticism outside of the DA, yeah. but internally, uh, he still he enjoys that support. So you can expect... Um, um, that, you know, if he is, I know nominations close on the 16th, but if it's coming down between Stian Hazen and Dr. Paul Palazzi, I mean, it's safe to assume that he will safely get that uh, second term. All right. Uh, Kenny Mapanga, politics reporter there. Thank you very much uh, for that.